Hello, I'm Eric Waite, and I want to thank you very much for joining me for a, another whiskey study in my continuing series on the business of Scotch whiskey. In this video, we're going to look at uh, the production um, of Scotch whiskey. The problem is, and everything goes into the bottle, the problem is there is this much information and there's no way in the world I can convey it all in a video uh, that would fit that you would actually watch. There's too much information. There's too much uh, little details. So what I'm gonna try to do is present the information in sort of a big picture overview fashion so that you understand at least a little bit, get a glimpse of uh, what it takes to produce this whiskey. Now, while I am going over my notes in sort of a summary fashion, uh, I'm gonna be enjoying a glass of the Long Grow Peated Campbellton Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. Of course, uh, this is uh, owned by, or produced by, actually by Springbank Distillery in Campbellton. Um, and I've already reviewed this whiskey, so if you want more details about it, you wanna check out uh, the uh, video, I'll put a link uh, uh, up above. So in the production of whiskey, you know, a lot of people complain about not having transparency on the bottle about the whiskey. So they don't like non-age statements. They wanna know, hey, what's the minimum age of a whiskey uh, in the bottle? There's a lot of other things that they wanna know. They wanna know what type of cast, and not every producer will tell you what kind of cast they use. There's a lot of things that they would like to have on, on the label on the bottle, but the, the reality is you can't fit it all. You can't fit everything there is to potentially know about a whiskey on the, on, on the label. You can't fit what kind of barley they used. You can't fit on there, you know, where, where did they do their cuts. You can't get, provide information about uh, the size and the shape of the stills, the source of the water, and a whole lot of other things. But there is something that perhaps ought to belong on a label that isn't on there that more people should actually be demanding, which is why does this whiskey cost so much? What is the breakdown? And as we go into the notes, I think you're gonna be shocked as to why the whiskey costs so much. Now, there are a number of different uh, producers that have been making changes in the labels, making changing uh, in their profiles, changing in their branding, and prices have been jumping up. And people are complaining, and I understand that, right? I mean, who wants to pay more for the whiskey? But if they actually put on the label what was the major contributor to the cost of a bottle of scotch whiskey, I think they'd be a lot more upset with someone else other than the producer. So let's get into my notes. The final price of a bottle of whiskey from market must take into account a vast number of variables. As well as the cost of producing the whiskey, there are several other factors that must be included, such as cost of distribution, on an off trade margin, not to mention taxes and duty. In certain markets, there are also tariffs that must be added to the price. For example, in India, an import duty of 150% is added before each of India's separate states adds their own local taxes to the price. These import levies and duty are not able to be controlled by the whiskey brand owner. It is the job of the Scotch Whiskey Association to lobby in these markets to reduce or remove import tariffs for Scotch whiskey. The Scotch Whiskey Association has been making good progress with reducing excise duty and tariffs in certain markets in recent years. From 2005 to 2015, the production of costs of a malt whiskey have increased. In 10 years, of barley costs have risen by 77%, and due to increases in production costs, profit margins of malt whiskey have decreased by 8.8%. Then there's the cost of warehousing. From 2005 to 2015, cost per hogshead per week rose an estimate of 24 pence to 29 pence. 
The cost of warehousing is expected to rise by half a pence per hogshead per week from 2014 onwards. From 2005 to 2015, distillation and warehouse costs have increased by 36%. From 2005 to 2015, the cost of producing one case of blended Scotch whiskey has increased by 30%. From 2005 to 2015, blending, bottling, and packaging costs have increased from 559 pence to 655 pence, with the total cost per case increase of 13.31 pounds to 16.67 pounds. Profit margins from 2005 to 2015 have also increased from 37.42% to 39.39%. So this is a really lovely whiskey. It is mildly smoky, mildly peated. In comparison to, say, like Isla, it has a uniqueness to it. There's a nice maltiness to it. There's nice vanilla, uh, dried stone fruits caramels, a hint of chocolate, it's a little bit of spice to it. Really, really nice whiskey. I would say, you know, Campbellton, there used to be over 20 distilleries in Campbellton. Uh, Campbellton, by eliminating so many distilleries, has really cut the fat. And what we have now in the three distilleries that remain is really the best of the best of what could remain. Now, my hope is that Campbellton will reopen some old distilleries. New distilleries will come to the area in this current boom in the Scotch whiskey industry. But it is absolutely marvelous. The distilleries that are there, Glengal, Glen Scotia, Springbank, that what they're currently producing is just absolutely superb. Unique. You, and just and not buying into trends and, and everything else. They're still doing a lot of things in the old way. All right, on the pot. Velvety, silky. Even at this ABV, there isn't a major bite. It has fruit up front, the dried fruit up front. The smoke sort of comes in in the mid to the, to, to, into the finish. It just glides across the palate. Has a real nice evolution. The big thing for me is evolution, that it isn't the same the front, the middle, and the finish. And what I get on the palate reflects the nose and sort of like these um, dried uh, stone fruit notes, a little bit of chocolate, some vanilla, caramel, a little bit of spice, and that hint of smoke. Really, really nice. One of the other issues is that we, we're going to get into next is it's not just about the distillery. Whiskey, Scotch whiskey, is not made in the distillery, right? New mixed spirit is made in the distillery. What is made, or where Scotch whiskey is made, is actually in the warehouse. It doesn't become Scotch whiskey until it has been aged for at least three years in a cask, in an oak cask. And so, what we really want to look at now is, in terms of the cost of producing a whiskey such as this, so you can have a micro distillery, and you might say, wow, they only have one spirit still and one wash still. But that's not what is really limiting them. That's, that, that's not what's keeping them micro. The real micro issue is the storage, right? Because you have to be aged at least minimally three years, and most go so much more than that. And storage or aging, maturing of whiskey requires space, requires time, requires management of the spirit over years and years and years and years uh, to get it to where it has the quality that we want to go into the bottle. And smaller distilleries don't have that space. So they're actually having to buy space uh, from other distilleries a lot of times in order to age the whiskey. But let's get into the issue of maturing whiskey and its contributing cost to our whiskey. Now, the next thing we want to look at is the turnaround time for making money from production. We're not just talking about distilling. We're actually talking about making whiskey. Whiskey is not made in the distillery. Whiskey is made in the warehouse. 
So the challenge is the matter of cash flow while waiting for your whiskey to mature. Some distillers produce vodka and gin to bring in cash, but the law requires a minimum of three years to call something Scotch whiskey, but most major brands sell their whiskey at 10, 12, and 15 years old or more, and so there are time delays in recouping production costs. So the real challenge is not just to produce a high quantity and quality of spirit. The real challenge is warehouse capacity, particularly for small micro distilleries. Then there's the issue of Angel's share. And this is not something that can be recouped and try to get around it by somehow trying to save the Angel's share and incorporate it back into whiskey. Losing the whiskey through the aging process is part of maturation. In the UK, a maturing cask of whiskey will generally lose between 1-2% to 2 alcohol in volume per year. For a micro distillery, it could cost £6,000 a month to run the distillery, continuing to produce whiskey, while you wait for maturing stocks to reach maturity and generate a return. In the UK, many consumers are surprised to find out that on an average bottle of blended whiskey, 74% of the total price is tax. And surprisingly, a value-added tax is charged twice on Scotch whiskey, on the duty itself, and on the final selling price. So on a bottle of Scotch whiskey that costs 14.15 pounds, the price of the tax burden is 10.41 pounds. So on a bottle that costs 14.15 pounds, the excise duty would be 8.04 pounds, the value added tax 2.37 pounds, the total tax 74% of the price is 10.41 pounds, and the price of the actual Scotch whiskey is 3.74 pounds, with a total price of 14.15 pounds. The rates of alcohol duties are adjusted annually by the Chancellor of the Exchequer as part of the UK budget. Since 2008, the alcohol duty had increased on the so-called duty escalator, this being in line with inflation plus 2%. However, in 2015, the Scotch Whiskey Association, who have lobbied against unfair taxing of Scotch whiskey for years, had a major breakthrough when the duties on spirits was cut by 2%. This was the first duty cut in duty on spirits in over 20 years. In autumn 2018, duty was frozen, and the Scotch Whiskey Association welcomed the Chancellor's decision to free the duty rate from the escalator. However, they have continued to argue that more needs to be done to reduce the duty and the value-added tax on Scotch whiskey. The current alcohol duty for spirits as of October 31, 2018, is 28.74 pounds per liter of pure alcohol. The minimum alcohol strength by volume for Scotch whiskey is 40% ABV. For a 70 CL bottle of Scotch whiskey, bottled at 40%, this would mean a duty of 8 pounds for pence. However, some whiskey brands and independent bottlers choose to bottle their whiskeys at higher ABVs, the higher the ABV, the more tax burden that will have to be included in the price of the whiskey. For every 0.5% ABV increase, there is an additional 10 pence duty to be paid. It should be again noted that value-added tax is applied to the duty as well as the final selling price. So there is a breakdown of various taxes for increasing of the alcohol by volume. We start at the top at 40% ABV. We have an excise duty of 8.04 pounds with a value added tax 1.61 pounds. The total is 9.65 pounds. Now we all like you know high ABV cast strength whiskeys. So let's jump down to the bottom at the chart and look at 60% ABV. Excise duty would be 12.04 pounds with a value-added tax of 2.41 pounds and the total would be 14.45 pounds. Alrighty, I hope you have uh, enjoyed this video. I just barely touched on the subject. I mean, I just sort of covered over it. And issues are, I mean, the costs are constantly changing, right? Um, 
the cost of barley is changing. You know, one year of barley, the production might not be as good. Um, how much barley cost per ton can change. How much, in terms of, depending on the quality of the bar, uh, barley, how much alcohol you're actually producing out of that barley. And I mean, there's so many variables that can contribute to the cost of producing a whiskey. But I think we've hit on some of the bigger issues and we've only covered, you know, say 2005 to 2015. We're now in 2019 and a lot has changed since then, right? So a lot of the information I have on uh, production of Scotch whiskey and the cost of uh, production of uh, Scotch whiskey, you know, it fits within that time period. But I think it still gives us sort of a general perception and understanding of the costs involved. So uh, the next time that you have a complaint about the increase of a price of a Scotch whiskey, particularly a single malt, do this. Take a look at how much it's costing distilleries to buy the barley, how much it's costing to age it, and how much they are being taxed before you ever see it on the cost. And that cost is being forwarded to you. You're paying for that. So this bottle, so another bottle, would cost so much less if the government wasn't dependent on an unbelievable amount of taxes in order to fund other things based on um, uh, uh, whiskey. All right. Um, tell you the truth. As I'm recording this, I've already had a few glasses of wine, and now I'm drinking whiskey, so I'm feeling pretty good. But uh, I wanted to get this video up because it's running a little late. I, ha I really, really struggled with it, compiling the information, trying to figure out what I want to put out there, what I want to convey, um, and, and in a fashion to which it would actually be consumable and understandable. All right, so that's it for this video. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, if you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And if you're interested in wine, uh, check out my wine channel. Um, I'm running both the wine and a whiskey channel. Just finished uh, doing some recording of a wine video. And normally I don't combine wine and whiskey in the same sitting, whatever. But uh, hey, you, you got to do what you got to do. It's all for science. It's all for research. It's all for studying uh, a wine and whiskey. All right, until next time, <laughs> cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.